So, uh, strategy is something important uh, to us. Uh, we, we think of strategy when we're thinking about uh, IT, because if we don't think IT strategically, it becomes or it remains the same uh, support tool that uh, appeared when we, we saw those Venkatraman, uh, remember Prabhu's uncle's uh, uh, papers from, from, when, from Monday, uh, when Venkatraman and Henderson were were saying that we should align technology to business, they were really thinking we should think of a, a strategy for the IT department or for the, the use of IT in organizations that would match the needs or match the interests of the organization. But we, we, we should not do that uh, thinking specifically uh, on supporting the, the strategy that an organization already has, because many times new technologies may allow us to change that strategy. And this is why, when we were discussing those, the different triangles, you know, where does uh, uh, strategy start? Sometimes it started with the upper management uh, uh, being a, a technology visionary and saying, look, uh, we need to, to implement spe uh, specific um, technology in our organization because this technology will make us stronger in our traditional business proposition. Other times you have the technology, the CIO, uh, the, the technology leader, going there to the, to, to the business and, and saying, look, there is technology here that allows us to change our business, to do, do things differently. Uh, not, not to do things differently, but to do different things. Remember, uh, on Monday, I told you about the difference between efficiency and effectiveness. When we use technology to do uh, things better, we are being more efficient. When we use technology to do different things than we used to do in the past, I cannot say that we are being more effective, but we are trying to be more effective because we are trying to do the right thing, what is necessary now, what is important for the customers now, uh, and not what we, we, we had in the past. So efficiency relates to doing, the right, uh, sorry, to doing something right. Effectiveness refers to doing the right thing. Okay? And uh, so going back to, to Nicola Machiavelli, uh, uh, you know, this writer of the 1400s who was interested in in change uh, as a well he was actually interested in in strategizing so that the kings of europe could become stronger uh, in fact uh, he his business was teaching kings how to rule their countries and become more powerful so there's a lot of sayings about uh, uh, you know that that, that are that are extracted from Nicola Machiavelli's book, and some of them have even, uh, they, they, they seem a little mean, mean in the way that, they seem that he was a cold person that was trying to do bad, because they're, they're taken sort of out of their context, uh, context. I'm not sure, maybe he was bad, but, but you know, it ended up even uh, uh, causing uh, uh, as to say, and I, I do believe that we say that in English as well, but we say it in, in most of the Romanic uh, languages, that someone is a Machiavellic person. Have you heard that? A ruthless person. Pardon? A ruthless person. Yeah, a Machiavellic person is someone who scolds, yeah, ruthless. Uh, usually that's the impression that we have. That is what we have associated with Nicola Machia uh, Machiavelli. Uh, and then you, you may think, gee, the two most uh, published books that we've ever had in the world were the Bible and the book in which someone is, is teaching how to do mean things. No, in fact, my reading, and of course I'm reading Machia Machiavelli um, 500 years uh, later, so again, as we, we said, there is a, this beauty in, in our technologies that they can transfer knowledge from one time to the other, but they don't transfer the environment together. So I'm reading what Machiavelli uh, wrote in, in 14 something and thinking with my 21st century mind. Uh, so it's difficult to really know if he was Machiavellic in that sense, or if he was just a strategist, maybe a, li a little cold strategist, because I'll tell you some of the sayings that we'll show in the, in the, in the book that you will, will probably say, well, he was definitely Machiavellic. For example, he, he, he had this saying, uh, the, it, it, when you do the good, uh, do it slowly. But when you do the bad, do it fast. Do you understand that? Uh, you know, if you have to do something bad to people, do it at once. If you have to do good things, do little by little. Politi politicians love that, right? Because, of course, uh, politicians love to give people 
some support all the time so that they go there and vote for them, so that they remember them. If they do good only once, people will not depend on them, uh, and then people will not, they think that people will not remember them. So politicians, are, uh, you know, lo love Machiavelli in this uh, narrow-minded uh, way of, uh, maybe they just get that from, and from, from, from him. There's another uh, saying uh, by Machiavelli Machia Machia that is very well known, is uh, the, the goals or the, the goals justify the means, or something like that. You've probably heard that already. Mm -hmm. That's Machiavelli, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do they, you know, do our goals justify any means? I mean, if I want to um, succeed in, in business, and, and, and there's another guy there that is disturbing, this, this is in my way, I just, you know, get him out of my way. Is, is that justifiable? Probably uh, in, in the way that we think, uh, today uh, it isn't um, well in the 1400s Europe was still a lot of small kingdoms fighting for their survival and it was very uh, I would like to say tribal because we the, the, the connotation here is it, we, we, it is but it, it was like different tribes fighting for survival in fact right uh, although the 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 world um, is full of resources. Uh, we, we, many times uh, there are there are reasons for for people to think that they have to use this, someone else's resources. It's easier to to get someone else's resources than de develop your own. Uh, well, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Machiavelli had so so he's known by some of these uh, sayings. But when you read his book, you notice that what he he, he was he, he was suggesting there is that we plan what we're doing. Uh, and I would say that most of what Machiavelli wrote in his book in the 1400s still fits. We can still use in planning. We don't have to be Machiavellic in the plan, uh, but planning means thinking what will happen depending on the actions that we take. Right. So if in the 1400s uh, he thought that uh, you know if, if you have an enemy uh, and you, you you need to I mean if, you, if you're involved in a fight. You know, just uh, well, it's, it's better than, than, than you kill your enemy, then you turn, you leave there, leave him there, and turn your back because he will come and kill you. That was maybe uh, related to his saying of do the the the, the bad uh, in a strong way and, and and do do good little by little. Uh, it's understood. If we try to change to 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 put ourselves in that in the context in which that book was written. Uh, it may not be as Machiavellic it is, it is, it, it, as it is in our, uh, at least in our environment today here in France or in, in, in parts of the world where we do, do not accept violence, for example, as a, a way of solving our problems. Right? But, uh, but, I, but I, I do suggest that you read it. It's, it's, you, you can read this book in probably in two or three hours on a Saturday afternoon uh, on the web. Uh, and you will see that a lot of what we think in business, a lot of what we think in planning the development of technologies, relies on Machiavelli the same way as a lot of what we think here in the Western countries relies on the, let's say, on, 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 on our relationship with the Bible in the past, more than in the present, right? Our societies here are not well, as religious as they were in the Middle Ages, uh, but we still we still uh, do have um, uh, those ideas as ideas with which we think other ideas. The same way as someone there may be someone in this class who is a Muslim, for example, uh, and and you will say the same way as for a Muslim, the ideas that that uh, are there in your sacred uh, books. Are, are the ideas with which you think in your life, even if you don't think you're a religious person, right? For example, I'm not a religious person, but I still value a lot of things that I, I acknowledge that they relate to a religion that was uh, with my family for or, or for, for, for for hundreds of years or so. So we, we shouldn't uh, uh, we, we should never forget how strong those ideas with which we think other ideas are. I don't know if you've thought of that before, but our, our ideas, are ideas a, a technology? Well, I told you already that our, that, that speech is a technology. 
Our, 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 do you think that our, our Some, ideas? Uh, can I go home because I'm not going to Sure, go home. Uh, because I, I will check Yeah, yeah, it, it will be recorded. Don't worry, Alina. Hope you, hope you feel better. <laughs> um, can you, you know, um, we, we should think of that. Uh, most authors don't include <laughs> ideas as a technology because they, they, they say, well, no, ideas is something that, that would happen to humans even if we didn't have our technologies. Maybe our ideas would be um, would be weaker or would be, uh, I don't know, think, think how difficult it would be to, to think if you did, didn't have a language to structure your thinking, right? So our ideas would be probably more uh, closer to, to how we believe that the ideas of some of our animals or our pets are, right? We notice that there is intelligence there, but it's not intelligence that is capable of sophisticating uh, uh, its, you know, well, if, even the use of that intelligence to, to do something different to what uh, it is simply basically living. Right? But so, so ideas are probably not, uh, uh, the ideas themselves are not a technology. But what about frameworks, the way we structure our, our ideas? Are they a technology? Models, right? I don't think that they are. And notice our way of learning is full of models. Our way of deciding is always based on models. We have models for everything. We create models, and after we have models, it's difficult for us to, to escape them. Think, for example, about this technology, if it is a technology, uh, a calendar. How come we are all here at the same time, in the same room? What, what made this happen? It's, you know, we have, remember I told you, in the, 14, in the, the, the 1200s and the 1300s, I think it was the 1300s, when the Benedict, Benedictine uh, monkey, monks mm -hmm. here in Europe invented the clock, they changed the way we thought about, uh, well, they made us think of progress, they made us think that we should go forward, they made even thinking about strategy possible. Machiavelli would, would not be able to have written uh, uh, his book if it was not for the clock some 200 years before him, right? Because it makes no sense to plan something when, right? We plan because we want to change things. If, you, if your mindset says there's nothing to change, it's day and night and then day again and night again, don't try to change because it's unchangeable. God defined that as being this way and, and we, it's, imp it's impossible to change it. If that was Machiavelli's mind, he would never have written The Prince, for example. So see how we build on ideas that others had before, on technologies that others built before. And those are things that are structured in our, our, our mind the same way as, let's say, the, the calendar. We are ruled. It's not that we, uh, of course, a, a calendar helps us organize, a schedule helps us organize our life. But at the same time, it rules our, our lives, right? You wake up, you check what you have to do that day, uh, and the, the calendar, or the, the schedule, dictates what you're going to be doing. It's not your choice any longer, right? So. In, in that sense, I, I consider it as being, uh, if it's not necessarily a uh, technology, uh, it is uh, something that has the same sort of effect on on our on the way we we decide. Oh, sorry, and uh, I, you know, I was looking for, and I, I included here the information about Machiavelli, but I didn't show if uh, Alina is going to see this later. Um, uh, of course, I was uh, I was checking here. I was, I was googling it to see the, the way we write. Uh, Niccolo Machiavelli and, and the, the name of his book, The Principle. All right. Okay. Uh, today we we have uh, in the morning we will be dealing with the how we we can use our technologies, our information technologies, to improve the way we relate with the supply chain or the value chain downstream. Right. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the term. Uh, value chain or or supply chain people you know chain. yeah operations man operations in, in operations management you know like people who, who work in the production I mean, in the production uh, line let's say they 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 use the term supply chain more often the supply chain basically is how you know everything that is connected to something that will turn into a product at the end relates to each other so from the raw materials and everything that happens in the transformation of raw materials into parts and then 
these parts into modules and modules into larger uh, systems, uh, you know, the whole thing is what we call the, the supply chain. Right? Uh, in marketing, uh, people many times use the term value chain. Um, why, the, why does marketing prefer the term value chain and not supply chain? Because they think we are, they, they say we're talking about the same thing, but we have to remember that each one of those links in the chain has to be adding value, right? Uh, it not necessarily always happens. There are sometimes we have supply chains or, or or even what we would call value chains where there are some links that are destroying value somehow, in 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 the sense that they put some efforts. There is energy spent. There is uh, materials that are incorporated to, to the product, and that's not perceived as being more valuable by whoever is going to buy that product at the end. Okay, but anyway, uh, we, 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 we could have written here supply chain as well. Uh, and I told you on Monday that, uh, and, and this is again an operations management term. Uh, they 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 say that something is happening downstream when it's after our own operation, right? So it's it's in the direction of, of the customers, the end customers. Uh, it, uh, we may not necessarily sell directly to the end customers. We may sell to someone who will still add value and then sell to end customers. But all everything that is to, uh, towards the direction of the end customer is called downstream the value chain. Uh, so if we look to, to our customers, it's downstream. If we look to our suppliers, it would be upstream. The same way as we think of a river, right? We, we, we say downstream, when it's going closer to the ocean, and upstream when we're looking towards the mountain. Okay, uh, so today in, uh, uh, in, in the morning we'll be focused, uh, focused here in understanding how we can use technology to improve value in, this, uh, uh, in the value chain. Uh, I had uh, organized here two papers for, for us to have as reference. The first one is by uh, Regis McKenna. He's a marketing person, um, 1995. So it's going to be 30 years in a f couple of years. Uh, last year, I still had one of my undergraduate students coming to me and saying, uh, I showed them this paper and he said, look, uh, professor, I'm doing uh, this internship in, in, in a company and I think my, my boss could benefit from reading this. Do you think I could send, uh, well, just do, do you think it would be reasonable to, to just make a copy of this and, and, and give it to him? And I said, sure, just, we always have to think how we deal with our superiors in our organizations. Sure, just do, try not to make it uh, seem that you do not trust what he's doing and you're saying, look, this guy said, uh, this guy here is going to tell you what you should be doing because he will, he, then he will laugh at you and say, uh, look, you're bringing me something that was written 30 years ago. That's obviously not good for us any longer, right? So don't put yourself against uh, your boss. Try to, to, to do it in a way that he, he thinks that this is a something additional to what he already does and, and that you believe that this will enlight, enlighten him or her better. Right? Um, I don't know if you ever saw this American uh, film I think it was the um, a Greek, a Greek. Uh, I don't know if that's the, that's the title in English. This is the problem, but, but it was Greek, Greek, Greek wedding or something. It's it's a, a comedy. But let me check if if I find it here and if this is the if this is the name of it. Yeah, it seems to be Greek, Greek wedding. No, uh, Greek wedding movie. Well, it, it appeared. Sorry, it appeared here in in in, in Portuguese, but uh, yeah. So so there is there is. Uh, no, I'm not sure if this is it. Uh, but anyway, I'm not sure if this is the the, the one because it, it's an older uh, movie, uh, and uh, and the, but, but basically the Greek wedding was the mother the mother and the daughter trying to plan the daughter's wedding, but making sure that the father thought that all the ideas they had were his ideas. <laughs> because he was a bossy uh, Greek uh, father, and he wanted to be the one in control, let's say. So 
most of the, 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 the film is them thinking, okay, oh, this seems great, but how are we going to make this? Your father think that he, this, this was his idea. And then, then they, they're planning, see? They read Machiavelli, for sure, right? They, they were planning and thinking, if we go there and tell him, you know, we want to do it this way, he's going to say, no, I have the final ruler here. I, it's going to be my way. And as you're saying that that's the way you went, no, it's definitely going to be different because I cannot admit that you have the, the, the best ideas. And then the, the, the whole film was them, uh, or, uh, was them planning how to make the boss, let's say the father in this case, think that he was the one in control. Uh, women are very able in, in doing that, and uh, I admire them for that, you know, so... <laughs> and, and I don't think that we should try to, that men should try to be in control, but in, in many cultures that was what used to happen. Um, and, but they're clever in, in making sure that they communicate, it, uh, that they, they, they communicate their ideas and that they enforce their ideas in ways that men many times can't. And I'm being here very stereotypical. Men will prefer to fight for their ideas than find uh, the clever way around that will take them to the same place with smaller efforts. So this is why, I, in fact, I believe that uh, women will definitely rule the world simply because they are smarter in the way they, they do that. But anyway, uh, the student of mine then took my advice and he went there and, and he told uh, his boss, look boss, I, you know, there was this professor who was, I mean, he's teaching our class in 2022, but he's shown us this paper of uh, 1995. I thought that there are some uh, interesting ideas here, but I would like to hear your opinion because you're much more, you know, I mean, you have, you have much more experience than I do. Uh, I want to, to, to know what you think, if, if you think that this guy uh, has something to tell us. And then the guy read it and then he, he gave me the feedback uh, afterwards that they were trying to implement a few of the ideas that McKenna was uh, writing about in 1995. They were trying to do that, to, to do that now. Uh, and which means, again, that this goes about as, I believe that good ideas should go, they should last long. You know, if, if an idea only lasts a couple of months or a couple of years, it was just hype. But ideas that last longer, those are there probably to last even longer, okay? The main things are here. I, I don't know, if, did anyone have a chance of uh, browsing through this paper? Uh, Maria, no? Uh, I just saw uh, my general, uh, like yeah, very, yeah, very fast. Okay, the, um, anyway, uh, you, if, you, if and when you look at this paper uh, more thoroughly, you will see that, well, this guy was writing it in 95. I've already told you, Google started its business in 98, right? So we were here in the pre-infancy uh, of uh, the internet. Pardon? Pre-globalization. Pre, well, well, it depends on what you call, uh, uh, when you think that globalization started. Uh, you know, I, I believe that, for, for example, the Portuguese and the Spanish already did globalization in the 1500s when they were shipping to, you know, selling ships to India uh, to bring, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, cinnamon and, and whatever, uh, and, and, and things that they didn't have. So that, that and, and, and I'm sure that uh, the Portuguese and the Spanish were not the beginning of uh, globalization. Marco Polo had already traveled to China before, and each time you know that there's something a little further, you want to bring it a little closer. Right? But, but definitely, uh, uh, pre, pre uh, th th this guy was talking about telling how we should proceed with our technologies, before the internet became uh, ubiquitous, uh, became something that, that, that is available everywhere and that is part of uh, life the way it is now. Right? And when, when I say that we have, we, we now, we, this technology is so, uh, the, the word, I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this word ubiquitous, uh, but anyway, it's something that is everywhere. To an extent that, for example, if you, if you ask a 10-year-old kid, uh, not to to you know n n not to do something in the internet for 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 an hour they will say is life possible can i breathe without can i breath without <laughs> without having my cell phone and, and, and connected to the internet right uh, this guy wrote this at, at, at a stage where companies were starting to experiment remember one of the papers that we saw uh, on monday the one about the three vectors uh, that was written in in 1998 99 uh, and, and, uh, and at that stage, companies were starting to think, what use can I have of the internet, for example? Uh, and, and the authors were proposing that companies at least made themselves present there 
presented their, their, their products virtually somehow so that customers could have already some experience with it. Um, so even the words, if you, well, this is a, this, this, what, 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 this what I included here is a scanner, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure, uh, some of this scanned papers, yeah, this, this is, it seems to be just a scanner. Oh, hang on. No. Uh, some of the scanned uh, papers at least went through some uh, optical character recognition and, 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 and you can search, right? I'm, I'm not sure if I've done this with this paper here. But anyway, if you look, if you read, you will see that the word internet only appears once or twice. Even, well, McKenna could, couldn't talk about something that was not part of his environment. Although he was very clear about where we were going to go with the technology, regardless of how the technology uh, developed from then on. Right? For example, one, one of the, the, well, the, if I had to summarize the paper, I would say that uh, the author's idea here is um, companies are, remember, he's a marketing guy. Companies are used to advertise their products in broadcasting media. Right? So they will either buy time uh, on TV uh, and, and have their advertisements in, in a time that everyone is in front of the, the, the TV. And, but it's broadcasting. Uh, the company has something to say and it, sa it, it conveys that message to millions of people. And uh, McKenna says, you know, with the technology that we have today, we should do it differently. We should try to build a dialogue with each one of our customers. So the, the, the meaning of the, the, the idea of the whole paper is build a dialogue. Maybe for us in 2022, uh, we, we can already think of good examples of companies that build a dialogue with their customers. Or maybe not, I don't know. Do you have any, any company that you think that has a close relationship with their, with their customers by means of its technological relationship with the customer? Maybe mobile phone? Mobile phone company. Mobile phone companies, uh, how do you think that they build a dialogue with you? They send updates. Pardon? They send updates. Update. Do they try to relate to you as an individual? No. no. They well, send push requests, yeah. they push, push uh, notification every time. I, I think that they still need to read this. Yes, yes. because uh, when, when we enter, for example, uh, for any seat, uh, for a commercial company, for example, a company uh, who sells uh, uh, electronic products, mm -hmm. so there is a dialogue which appear directly. How can we help you? How can we help you? Yeah. Uh, notice that the building the dialogue does not necessarily have to be, Maria, uh, you know, uh, putting you in, in a chat with uh, with uh, a human at the other end, oh, right? Okay. But but that's that, that's an attempt to to. To, to, to show the, the customers that you are involved, even if the company has millions of customers and many times they put a robot to talk to you and then you feel angry because the robot is not able to solve your problem. So they, they have not heard the message, at least not in full, because building the dialogue is not pretending that you're talking to, to customers, putting a robot to, to pretend that, 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 that the problem is going to be solved, that, that the company cares for you. In fact, I, I do think, uh, Prabhu, that the, this um, telephone uh, operating companies, they are some of those that need an, an intern to go there and take them, take this paper to, to, to them and say, look, because they are, are well fit to develop uh, what, it will become clear, don't worry what I mean by the, or what uh, McKenna meant by building a dialogue with the customer, but they are shaped to do that because their business is fully electronic. So uh, they, are able, they are able, and they do collect a lot of information about ourselves. Uh, the thing is, what they're doing with the information that collect, they collect from us is that helping uh, them re establish a relationship in which we feel that we are a special customer. In general, uh, the, 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 you know, telephone operating companies, I think that they, they, they were never able to do that. I, um, I do not recall any relationship that I have had with any uh, uh, telephone operating company that I thought, well, these guys are great, you know. Sometimes their service, the quality of their product is good for a while. Banks, ba ba banks, some banks do it a little better. If you think, for example, uh, maybe the part of the, the build the dialogue uh, here would be uh, for a bank 
to, to set home banking, for example, and to make sure that each customer, when he or she gets in front of a computer screen or even their mobile uh, phone uh, screen and, and wants to do something with, with the bank, they get the best experience and it, it, it is an experience that was created for that customer uh, in a unique uh, fashion. So, I mean, when you get to, 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 to the bank online and it shows you your own statements, that's part of the building a dialogue. They're not showing uh, everyone's uh, business and you having to find out yours, right? When they notice that you are, let's say, that you, some, sometimes they can even notice that you, you bought something big based on, 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 the, on the flow of, uh, on the cash flow, and they, they, they understand that something is happening, they may offer you a loan or they may offer you uh, some uh, special way of organizing your finance. And, and that's being done specifically for you. Of course, you're going to say it's not a human that is at the other side. The, the dialogue doesn't have to be between you and a human at the other side because that, that may be unaffordable. Right? It, it, there's no problem if it's a robot at the other side. There's no problem if it's, uh, uh, um, um, I don't know, some, 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 some sort of uh, machine learning uh, technology uh, or some artificial intelligence. The customer is not interested in the, te in the technology that you're using. The customer is interested in this, the experience that you're providing to him or her. Right? Um, and, but, but what uh, Makina says is it becomes much cheaper to build a dialogue uh, when you can have the customer at one end and your systems at the other. Maybe the wrong message that some of these companies uh, got out of what Makina said and other, of course, uh, other people that were that had clever ideas about this is that they said, "Oh, okay, so it's it's putting the customer to talk to to my machines here. That's easy. Oh, you, you know, just create a robot here that will be saying hello to them and trying to figure out what they need uh, and and failing in doing that, or 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 taking much longer to fail. And then, okay, so if I was not able to solve it, I will now send you to a human. Uh, but but then the customer perceives that as I'm not being treated as a special customer. I'm, I'm, I'm being treated as junk." Uh, and only after they, they spend all my time, they will try and, and, and solve my problem. So, so yeah. I think that optical uh, selling uh, that uh, companies are doing these things because they send a special person for checking the eyes and everything. I know the company. You mean that sell? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. optical two hundred or something like op two hundred or two hundred. In the front, oh, right, I'm, I'm not familiar with this uh, uh, company, but maybe uh, if 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 they if they make you feel that you're being treated. Yes, they're single, they're their only customer. No, even in India, uh, there's this new startup called Medi Delivery, mm -hmm. uh, which is totally into the hospitality. Even mm -hmm. they treat the same way. Okay. The customer says, I have a flu, they send a doctor for you. Uh -huh. All right. Recently been acquired by Tata. Yeah, Tata seems to be the owner of everything. In they, they made uh, <laughs> highest profit in this industry, in this quarter three, they made close to 10,000 crore. Right. Um, uh -huh. Close to 1.2 billion. Yeah. Yes, dear money. Um, but notice, it's it's not. Um, of course, uh, you you could think, okay. But if if you in the past you would telephone a company and say I'm sick, and they would send a doctor, right? So what what's the difference? The difference is how you can use technology to do that instead of doing that with 50 customers that you have, do that with 50 million customers, and still have each one of them have the feeling that they are being supported as if they were. Only one of those out of 50 and not 50 million, okay? Uh, uh, Makena says that we should not think of uh, broadcasting any longer, that the world would be a world of narrow casting. Each time figuring out uh, or, or trying to address the problems of, uh, of, of smaller groups or even individuals. One of the examples that he gives here is uh, uh, of uh, a project that Levi's, Levi's, the jeans company, uh, was developing. Uh, and I can assure you, if the, this paper was published in 95, Levi was doing that probably 93 or so, because a paper like this takes at least one year from when it's sent to the, to the journal until it gets uh, reviewed. Uh, many times it's peer reviewed, you know, it's a sort of a, although this is not exactly an academic paper in the sense that it's not a scientific paper. Uh, it is a paper that was published 
in uh, where is this? This is I don't know. oh, this is uh, Harvard Business Review as well, right? In Harvard Business Review, which is a a journal by uh, a university, uh, and it, it is a journal that uh, feels that whatever is published there needs to have some scientific, uh, you know, it has to be gone through the the, the procedures that we usually use in, in academia, and that means double, maybe double blind review, the kind of uh, process uh, that uh, usually happens for scientific publication. So at least one, one year before. So in, in, in 93 or 94, Levi's was experimenting with a new business model, a new business model based on technology. I will, I will tell you what the model was, and then you will have to think of uh, uh, Prabhu's uh, uncle's uh, paper from Monday, which of those different uh, uh, perspectives of alignment of IT that involved. Uh, what, what Levi's was doing was as follows. They, they, they had an agreement with several retail, um, retail companies that uh, customers could go to the retail company, for example, I don't know, Macy's or I don't know, here, CNA or uh, one of these retail companies and uh, where they usually would go to buy jeans, but then they would be offered the possibility of having their body measured and oh, yeah. jeans made as a, a, instead of out of the shelf product made to order. So they would get those uh, that, that pair of jeans a couple of weeks later at home through the mail. Okay. Like Pardon? Oh, they are doing like what Nike is doing also. Only those no. uh, you have to select what you want on the. Exactly. Uh, well, at this stage, notice they were not doing it in the internet, the internet. because so they uh, let's say you went to to a CNA shop here. I think they, they do have here in, in, in France. They, they do to have CNA, right? Or or I don't know one one of these retail shops, H H M or uh, you would go there. They would take your measures, uh, and then you would pay for the the products and you would get it two weeks later at home. Uh, that would be convenient, maybe not as convenient as getting out of the shop straight with your, your pair of jeans, but two weeks later you would get it at home. The, 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 but the good thing is it will be perfectly fit to you. I don't know how your bodies are. Mine doesn't seem to fit any of the models that they have, so uh, I usually either have a uh, problem with, I have very long legs, so either I have a problem to fit my waist, uh, and, and maybe it's, it's loose here or it's short. It's, it's, sometimes I, I, I find it difficult to to find find jeans that are exactly my size. So this is this is a clever idea, right? Um, uh, not everyone is exactly the shape that Levi's would think we are. Uh, okay, uh, they did that. Uh, we have to think it, it's a change. It's a business change. What makes it possible? Technology makes it possible because the, the retail shop gets the measures included in a, t in a terminal and that information goes directly to the manufacturing plants, Levi's manufacturing plants, uh, and it's, uh, it's included there in the production line uh, and the product is produced and at the end the product is ready and there is a, already a, a stample there saying well this should be sent to, the, to this address. Uh, technology makes that possible because all the, the required information is in databases uh, that, that that are consulted by the by the production process uh, itself. All right. Uh, regardless of how automated that is, it doesn't matter if it's if it's too automated or not. But the fact is that technology makes that possible. So the so so it's technolo technologically feasible. Uh, the customer is happy because the customer is going to be to to get. Um, you know, customized jeans. The, uh, Levi's is happy because it has the same advantage that I told you uh, on Monday about, you know, when, when you turn what used to be a sh off the shelf product into a made to order product, I have, I, 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 I changed the, the cash flow. The customer pays before I produce. That's very, that, that's something that is very attractive to any company because the customer becomes the f the, the, the the fund uh, uh, the funder or funder in the sense that in the sense that they, they, they will be the ones that will uh, sponsor almost sponsor the production right uh, the company doesn't have to put all a lot of money 
in the production before the customer says what uh, he or she wants. There's another great advantage for Levi's that it only produces something that will be sold or in fact that has already been sold. So it's not going to be any waste in the sense that uh, you know many times companies, uh, retail companies end up with a lot of um, um, stock of products that customers don't want to buy and that has to be sold at a at a, at a liquid at a sales price right? when simply because there was a problem in anticipating what the, the real needs of the customers would be but the problem this problem of anticipating will always happen right we do not have a crystal ball we don't know exactly what the customer will want so if we, if we want to produce and send to the market and wait for the customer there's always going to be some waste or some or some part of that production that will turn into sales at the end because nobody wants it so that was also good for 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 nike so the model seemed great there was a, another huge advantage to to uh, i said nike to, to levi's right there was another huge advantage there uh, they were doing that in the united states and uh, the models that they had of the American population were models, they were doing this in the 90s, but were models that had been created uh, after the Second World War, right? So after the Second World War, they had gone to, to do, do some um, market research, which may, means stopping people at the streets maybe and saying, well, we'll pay you 50 bucks if you allow us to measure the sizes of your leg, your waist and everything, because we are starting uh, uh, Starting company. I mean, we're we're deciding on the the sizes that we want to have in our collection, but they would have to pay for that, right? Think if is it possible that someone stops you here in the middle of the street and say, "Do you mind if I take uh, measures of your body?" I would say, "Come on, get serious, right?" <laughs> and nowadays we we are even more uh, intimidated by that because we think that that's even some invasion of our of our privacy. I mean, we we all we are all happy to. Uh, with the invasion of our privacy, it's just that we became more expensive, right? We'll say, okay, you can do that, but it's for $50, no, I want $100 to stand here for, for 15 minutes and you, and you take uh, my measures. Anyway, uh, notice that uh, Levi's was getting that for free, okay? The customer was happy to provide that information because the customer was thinking not that they were contributing to a database that would help Levi's improve the quality of the products that it would be sending to its uh, to all, all all the retail shops afterwards, they were thinking, well, they, they're measuring me to provide me with uh, a product. So build and and, and then you, you you could think, well, where is the building the dialogue there? Taking someone's measures is the building building the dialogue because you measure someone's leg, and it's it's the same as if you had asked Alex, how long is your leg? They get that, you know, building that dialogue is making sure that the customer is providing the company with information that can be used to improve the, the product or to improve the value proposition for that customer or any other customer. But we have to do that in a way that the customer feels that he or she is getting a benefit out of it, right? Because then they do that, that happily. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you if, if you just want to get that information for your company's sake without the customer being benefited directly, then you have to pay for that. So uh, Levi's noticed that it could instead of, of course, it was a little more expensive to produce customized jeans than to produce the traditional um, large, uh, large batches of uh, jeans all the same size, P, uh, small, medium, large, or extra large, or whatever. Okay. Um, it was a little more expensive, but they did not have to, to spend any extra money in marketing research, in, in understanding the customer, because the customer was willing to talk. If we think of, of uh, any company that sells products through the web, it is to some extent um, it, it has to some extent changed its model from an off-the-shelf to uh, a build-to-order uh, um, logic. And, and, and this logic, I mean, if someone clicks on a button on a website, 
Uh, that's part of a dialogue. See, each time the customer clicks on a button, makes a choice, that is information that is made available to the company. Uh, that's part of the dialogue that is being built. Remember that, that, that uh, in our previous class, I told you that when you go to a, a tennis shoe shop, try some shoes there, don't buy anything, you did not build a dialogue. Because, uh, I mean, you may, may, you may have talked to the, to the attendants, uh, you may have had a nice chat, but you did not build a dialogue in the sense that that dialogue uh, led to more knowledge about the, the product or the business. Uh, so that the company can improve its value proposition. So uh, Levi's here had an interesting way of developing or building this dialogue. Well, uh, McKenna is all very impressed with uh, with Levi's, uh, let's call it experiments, because they were starting to do that. Right? McKenna didn't follow up on what happened later. Uh, I, well, I read McKenna's paper for the first time probably one or two years after it was published. Maybe two, I, I probably read it in 1996, the first time. Uh, and I started trying to figure out what had happened to Levi's uh, project. It was gone. I couldn't find any information about it. That's a problem, right? I mean, this guy in 95 says, look, these guys are doing something great here. And then you go there in 96, 97, you try to see how that has progressed. I mean, we, we live in a world where we think that things only progress in a way they, they either progress or they fail. And I thought, it seems that device project failed, which would mean, well, uh, Regis McKenna's uh, argument fails also, because if he gives me some good example of how we should do, and then the company that is doing that fails or goes back and you know, reviews the, 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 the process and decides not to continue, uh, then uh, device paper, uh, sorry, sorry, McKenna's paper is, is also failure. Um, so I, 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 for, for, for quite a few years, I, I was there looking and trying to figure out what had happened to, to Levi's. One thing that uh, happens in, in this business world is that people don't like talking about failure, right? So I never got the definitive answer to my question. Why, why, did, why didn't Levi's go on with that? But I have my own, let's say, um, my own guesses about what happened. But before we get to my guesses about what happened to, to Levi's here, do you see any companies doing, uh, you know, building, building their dialogue the, the way that Levi's was trying to, do, to build here on the internet these days? Like selling customized products? Yeah, uh, there are companies, they have an option, yeah. They're moving, you can hmm? customize the car. To go customize cars, okay. What else? Even specs. Oh, the specs. Spe uh, okay, uh, glasses. Uh -huh. uh, there's everyone is doing that now. Right? What What was the problem with uh, Levi's? Let, let Let me see if you have any guesses. Do, what do you think that could have happened? I think because Levi's uh, don't they didn't produce any product without uh, request. So it's just, they just uh, produce the requested uh, products. I don't think there's a lot of more. Well, no, no, they did. They, they still kept having their the tra their traditional jeans uh, 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 business was still there, right? So, so you could go to the shop and buy uh, the uh, the jeans that they had there, right? Uh, in fact, uh, Levi's continues to be a very successful company. What did not go on was this project of doing the customized uh, uh, jeans. For example, when, when you think of, of Nike, Nike has not turned in, its business into only selling customized tennis shoes, right? In fact, their huge, their, their large business is selling uh, uh, shoes that are made in in a production line because it's cheaper. It's still cheaper, even though technology has made customization cheaper. It's still not as cheap as having every product exactly the same, right? But uh, in the case of of uh, Nike. Uh, well, Nike was is a more recent uh, development. Nike started doing this in the the, the, the twenty. Uh, I think, I think the first time I saw it was maybe two thousand and five or so, right? So, more than ten years after. So th there's th there may be one of the reasons. Maybe this one. You know, sometimes you, we could even say 
well the market was not prepared for that um, but uh, so it was not that they were only proposing that and and that was seen as and besides I, I do think that there will many many customers would still find more valuable to get out of the shop with the pair of jeans already so selling an off-the-shelf product has its own virtues has its, its own uh, reasons right people tend to we, we do have this if we can have the product straight away it reduces it reduces uncertainty right we know I have it with me I have already paid and I have the product with me there is uh, the, the level of risk is smaller uh, you can use that that pair of jeans the same day you don't have to wait so there are there are also benefits for and, and there will be people that will not want to wait uh, but uh, in that in that in, in that sense uh, there were a lot of people that were or, well at, at least enough people that were happy to wait for two weeks to make that a feasible at least a feasible way of Levi's getting marketing information uh, from customers in a cheaper way than than if they had to you know to to perform to, to develop other initiatives to do that so this was not necessarily not exactly what happened well I'll tell you what I believe that was the problem uh, we always have to think uh, when we think of a, of a change and we will discuss change on, on change management on on Friday but when we think uh, of what happens what will happen in a change we have to, to check uh, how it's going to be for every stakeholder involved and uh, Levi's uh, project didn't involve only Levi's and the customer there was also the retailer and I believe that for the, the retailer probably started thinking you know this product that uh, Levi's is doing is cool but it's cool for the customer it's not cool for me the first time that Levi's sell the product they are they, the customer is buying it in my shop but afterwards Levi's already has a direct connection with with the end customer and I am sort of out of it I'm sure that probably Levi's had an agreement even with the, those companies in the sense of saying look if I sell other jeans to, to the same customer you will get a commission I think they probably had an agreement like that but that's already a risk right uh, for the company uh, the, for, for the retailer uh, they say will will they really be honest enough and, and first will they be honest and tell me when they sell something directly and in addition to that there's another problem customers that go to a retail shop to buy jeans sometimes they also buy a pair of sneakers they buy socks they buy underwear they buy other stuff the retail shop is not a shop that is there to sell Levi's jeans it's there to, to sell the convenience of having a lot of stuff on the same place if if Levi starts a new trend and each of those companies that that usually deal with the retailer decide to sell directly uh, it's not going to be to the to the retailers interest right so I, I do believe that maybe the retailer was not very happy about that or maybe even it could have it could have even been uh, something that Levi's already had in the contract with the retailer that they would be doing that only for two years right so and their intention was really to build the dialogue with the customer exactly like McKenna uh, was uh, recommending here uh, to get inform build, build a dialogue to get information to get measures and notice that I told you that the, the models they had were models that were that, that had been uh, uh, produced uh, right after the Second World War and uh, in the 1990s I can assure you that the North Americans were much bigger than they were before right now they're starting to, to become fitter again but for quite a while uh, North Americans due to the kind of uh, uh, food that they that they eat the, the fast food uh, uh, concept of their culture they were getting bigger and bigger and probably uh, Levi's needed to, to re, uh, reset their, their standards of how many pants of each size that they should produce or, or, or how were those sizes different to what they had in their traditional models right? so maybe maybe they even had an agreement look we know that this may not be interesting for you in the future so this is something that we'll do for six months a year I don't have access to that, those contracts I, I could never find out why they stopped but I believe that maybe this was the the case right um, and then you could say well but what happens uh, why didn't uh, Nike stop doing customized uh, tennis shoes how come Nike was able to although it still sells most of its products through the retail shops uh, how can, how come that they can sell uh, directly to the customers as well and let's say 
build this dialogue and keep the dialogue going for so many years? I would say probably because they do not have to ask the retailers. You know, nowadays with the internet available, they just say, well, look, if you want to buy uh, uh, customized shoes, you buy directly from my, from my website. If you want to buy regular shoes, go to any retail shop and they, and, and they will be happy to, to serve you. Okay. But it's, uh, it's uh, um, so, so think of this as, can, is, is there a way we can use the interaction we have with customers on the web, on their cell phones, or whatever, or whatever other electronic mean that we have available, is there a way we can turn that into a meaningful dialogue between customers and our systems that allows us to get more knowledge, knowledge that we can use to improve the value of our products, the value of our process. Remember, uh, again, one of Mr. Venkatraman's uh, papers from Monday, uh, the one about the three vectors. The first vector was uh, how, how the, the, the company uh, used uh, technology to, to, to provide for an encounter with the customer, improve the, the interaction with the customer. Well, this is precisely what McKenna is proposing here. But there was also a third vector there that was uh, knowledge management. How do I use each uh, possibility that I have to meet my customers? Or Well, they're not only talking about customers, but also the suppliers and everything. How do I, do I use all that information to gain better knowledge uh, about my own business and improve uh, that business then. Well, now to the question, going back to, to, to the other Venka Truman's uh, paper, if we think about those different uh, perspectives of alignment of IT to the business, this, pro th th this model that was being used by, by Levi's, which one of those uh, it, it, it is in your opinion? Is it this one? The strategy, strategy execution alignment perspective? Is it this one? Technology transformation alignment perspective? Competitive potential alignment perspective? Or service level alignment perspective? What do you think? Hmm? I think this one here. You know, there is uh, uh, the and, and why this one? Because we are changing the business again. Notice that we we don't necessarily have to uh, a project doesn't have to change the whole business of the organization. Mm -hmm. If you change part of it, or if, if even if you create uh, maybe it's just a rehearsal. You want to see if if, if it's a project to see if uh, something is of interest to the customers, right? Uh, in all those cases, what's happening here is you're, it's a different business, right? Selling, selling um, jeans um, in a, in a made-to-order uh, approach is different to selling jeans that are made to stock, that are made to, to, to be bought out of the shelf. It's a different business. Uh, uh, at least so it's not maybe not radically different because you, you can still benefit from, from, from the strength that you already had. Remember the, the SWOT analysis thing? Uh, but it is, uh, you're, you're changing your business and you're changing your business because there is a new technology that allows for that to happen. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, th th they, they give uh, some other, other examples here, but I would say that the main thing is, he said, look, the world is changing and the world is changing fast. Uh, the new technologies will allow us to do different things. Instead of advertising our products, we may check what each customer wants and deliver that directly to that customer. All right. Okay. Uh, so the second paper that we have to discuss uh, this morning is this Nambisan and Nambisan. Um, so these are not related, right? There's there's a different different not another group of people. Uh, uh, Nambisa is also, uh, I think this is a couple, uh, and this one of them is, uh, I've, I've seen several papers, so it's, it's an influential American, uh, well, 
uh, I would say American Indian. Uh, pro could 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 uh, this name also be uh, from uh, I don't know from Nepal or some or no? no, no this is like, Indian. This is from the Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Oh, so this is this is an Indian name, yeah. So back back in 1980s, what happened? Many Tamilians and Telugus they wanted children to do PhDs. Mm -hmm. So PhD was so famous in India. Uh -huh. So whoever did the engineering, they used to go to the United States to mm -hmm. do masters and PhD. Right. That was the how do I say kind of a culture they made. Uh -huh. Now so in India they come to bachelors. Masters US, Masters US. Okay, I and see. Flow. So yeah, and, and, and because there are, there, are many, there are many professors in the United mm -hmm. States that are uh, Indian. And anyway, uh, so this, these guys here, uh, they, I think that they build on the ideas of... Uh, I, I, I don't want to say that it's uh, Makina's ideas, right? Makina was a conveyor of uh, the ideas of a time, ideas that were being discussed and, and discussed in academia, but at the same time, things that were happening in practice, right? Makina wrote his paper looking at companies like Levi's, uh, and even he also mentions uh, Dell and several other companies that were, were using technology in, in a way to get closer to their customers and to understand their customers' needs better by means of, uh, of that technology. Uh, so it's, it's never, it's not Makina's ideas. Makina was someone who organized those. Of course, he was the clever person who realized what was happening and somehow systematized it, uh, some, somehow, you know, wrote uh, about it. And, and when Nambisan and Nambisan do it in, you know, some almost 15 years later, uh, they, they curiously do not refer to Makina's uh, paper. Uh, I don't know if it could, could be that they, they were never aware of Makina's paper directly. Again, I'm not going to say here that Makina is, has changed the world, right? Uh, Makina has depicted something that was happening in the world. Uh, but this paper here, if you go to the references, Makina is not there as a reference. But uh, even the title here, uh, when, when they propose a virtual customer environment, uh, uh, and, 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 and mainly how, how can companies benefit from, from providing customers with this virtual environment, they're definitely referring to the same sort of ideas. Right? They're thinking that customers uh, can be an important source of, uh, well, of ideas, but also a source of, uh, um, uh, of work, right? Uh, you will see what they promote here is that companies can use the efforts of customers to build their own business. Let me show you, uh, I think, the, the table here that summarizes, this is a table that summarizes what these uh, guys were up to. They say that uh, this uh, virtual customer environment, which is basically a place where you would build the dialogue with the, with the customer, right, can uh, help a company bring the, the customer closer in a way that the customer can help, uh, the, 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 the customer can, can become, for example, a product conceptualizer. You engage customers in, in an activity of helping you to conceptualize the next generation of your products. What is the advantage of including customers in this effort of conceptualizing products of the future? So they will think uh, uh, they want to include them, so they will think they belong. There is there is a sense of belonging for sure. Uh, this is a very important one. This is not the first one that we usually think of, but it, I think it's it's a very important one. Before that, you would you, you could say, well, uh, uh, we want to bring the customers to help us conceptualize our products because then they will bring their needs, right? And based on their needs, we will build a product that address those needs, right? So that's that's a more direct way of thinking. But surely, uh, 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 only uh, uh, um, uh, the sense of belonging is is something that we, we should be interested in because when people help build something, they become um, they become the champions that will push that that idea forward. They they will become the advertisers of your product later. They will become uh, those who will fight to make sure that uh, the product succeeds because they feel part of it. But anyway, uh, uh, so, so th these authors say, well, you know, you can bring uh, customers and, and they can help you conceptualize your product. And, and most, in fact, all of the, the propositions that they have here for bringing customers closer to the, the organization uh, involve uh, paying nothing to those customers. So getting the customers to help for free. Uh, there is another Berkeley professor, uh, Chesbro, 
Henry Chesbro, uh, who, who wrote about open innovation. Have you heard of open innovation? No. Open innovation as being the possibility of, instead of relying only on the research uh, and development team of your organization, sort of push that uh, activity also to other people that are outside the company. Of course, uh, an open innovation means, you know, get, get, get the, the innovation that you need for your business come from, from, from the market directly, uh, reducing your costs. Uh, it's a very interesting concept uh, because it relies on the collective intelligence of the crowds on the web, for example, to solve problems that are problems important for your organization. Right? And I, I think that these uh, guys here, Nambisa and Nambisa, although they do not also, they do not refer directly to, to a Henry Chesbro's open innovation uh, concepts, uh, they're part of the same, I mean, they, they live in the same world, right? So they're perceiving the same things. They're, they're perceiving that customers are willing to support companies that are uh, providing them with uh, things that they want or that they like. So uh, those guys that, who, who get involved in product concept conceptualization here, they're people that are very, uh, uh, um, very fond of uh, specific brands. For example, he gives here the suggestion of uh, Oh, he gives us an example, Ducati. Do you know Ducati? Motorbike Ducati. company. Yeah, it's a fancy Italian motorbike uh, company. Uh, and Ducati built, well, they, they reported here, you can read in detail later, built uh, what they call here the Ducati Tech, Tech Cafe. It's a virtual thing, right? It was uh, in, in 2008 when, they, when these guys were researching this. It was a virtual environment in which uh, Ducati fans and or, or, or people who had Ducati uh, bikes uh, would meet and exchange ideas and exchange ideas and ideas with engineers of uh, Ducati uh, that could lead to to improved products in in the future. Okay. Uh, well, we'll discuss here uh, these other lines of this table uh, later. Let's first go through the several possibilities that these authors here thought were available for a company to involve, to engage, to involve its, its customers. Uh, you can also involve customers as product designers. Conceptualization, design, are they the same thing? No, conceptualization happens first, right? Conceptualization is mainly concerned with the ideas. With uh, After you conceptualize a product, then you start designing it. So the, the design is, is where you, you make the dreams, feasible, right? Where you, you, you check all those things that were conceptualized and see which ones of them you can turn into reality. Uh, and uh, over here, um, in, in this more, let's say, tangible uh, activity, uh, they give us the examples uh, of BMW and the way BMW created uh, a customer innovation lab in which customers got engaged in helping design features of uh, the product. Now we're talking about features of the product. So it's different to conceptualization that is more general, it's dreams, ideas for the future. Here we're already thinking of, uh, of uh, direct involvement with, with, with the design. Uh, another possibility is turning customers into product testers. I mean, everyone who's already uh, worked with a beta version of some software what you were doing is precisely this, right? You were helping uh, the company to improve their products while you were using it. So you had the benefit of using it before others. You even felt special because the company invited you to be to be part of their beta test. Um, but in fact, you're working for them and you're working for free, right? Uh, uh, to help them improve the quality of their products. Uh, here they give an example of uh, Volvo's Concept Lab. Sorry. Um, and then uh, we have the possibility of uh, involving customers as product support specialists. Okay, why would you want to work as a specialist for free? Well, Microsoft was able to do that. Right? Microsoft uh, uh, basically, basically, sorry, uh, I'm trying to just. What Microsoft uh, uh, did was it, uh, it allowed the people who had good knowledge of Microsoft products help others or support other users um, 
in, in doing whatever they had to do with uh, Microsoft products. Uh, and, uh, and, and people would do that uh, because if they were well assessed by the users they were helping, Microsoft would allow them to, to use a badge in their, in their cards or, to, or nowadays it's not a business card any longer, in, in LinkedIn or something, where they could say, well, I am a, an official Microsoft, uh, uh, they, had, they, had a name. They, they, they had a fancy name for it, but it was basically a Microsoft uh, solution provider. So by, by Microsoft, it, that, that was not the name, but they, they allowed you to, to use that, to brand yourself as being someone that was knowledgeable in Microsoft products, which on its turn helped you get other businesses, right? So because you were acknowledged by the, the, the Microsoft community, uh, to be someone who was uh, competent on that, you could get other businesses. So you didn't get paid by Microsoft, but you got this recognition of uh, your knowledge that you could use elsewhere. And uh, they also claim that uh, users can be users or customers can be uh, transformed in product marketers. Uh, here they also give uh, some examples. Uh, and, and they give the, they give the example of uh, Samsung virtual product launch, and they give details of that in the in the paper. But I think that the first time a company did that was still in the 1990s uh, to transform the customer in a product marketer. When Hotmail, does anyone has a Hotmail account? No, you, you do. Yeah, uh, you used to, but you were probably already a second this uh, a second generation of uh, of, of yeah. users. Because uh, you probably did not use Hotmail in a time where whenever you sent a mail to someone else, it would at the, the bottom say, if you, if you also want to have a free Hotmail account, click here. Right? Th this is how Hotmail started. Hotmail started uh, being a free uh, email uh, provider, but using the users that were using the, the, the product as advertisers, because whenever you sent any mail, at the bottom, it said, if, if, if you want to do like your, your friend there, was, uh, and if you want to use this, click here and you will get a free account. By doing that, Hotmail became, uh, or soon became, the, the, the provider with more users in many countries in the world. I remember that Sweden, there were several, the, the Nordic countries, they were all, and they had never spent a cent on, on advertisement. So turning users into advertisers. Uh, uh, of course, users accept that if they feel that they're getting something in exchange. In this case, what they were getting, they were getting a free service. They could not say, well, I, I don't want that last line there, right? And, and uh, Hotmail never even gave them the chance of, okay, if you don't want this advertisement line, just pay me 10 bucks a month or so. They never even gave them people that possibility because they thought that people would be quite okay with uh, that kind of an advertisement. Um, well, we don't see here uh, exactly the uh, it, it's, uh, the value chain, or do we? Uh, uh, if we think of the the whole supply chain, uh, the supply chain starts with suppliers, uh, and then uh, with our production uh, and, and and our customers. Uh, so this is not a, a, exactly a, a, a clear. Um, uh, um, clear way of showing that customers can in, be involved in all the, the company's activities, but I think that, that, it, that they could have gone even further. For example, I see that many companies do, and I would include another column here, many companies use the customers to produce their product these days, also for free. Can you think of any companies that pro where, where the customers produce their product? that is then sell, uh, sold to other customers or to themselves? Gmail? No. Gmail, no. Well, if, if you think Gmail, uh, the, their product is email sending, right? So I think... Uh, Google as a whole. Google as a whole. Because uh, they'll give you a free version, mm -hmm. then if you want more, you have to pay. Mm -hmm. Right, no, but what I'm saying is uh, uh, situations in which uh, you become the producer of their product. You produce the company's product. I think that there is some. That we, we can say that Google, in some way, for example, the the, the Google search uh, mechanism, that is something 
that is produced by the customers. We can get to that, but that's not so clear as some other examples that we have. YouTube. Still on that. Think of YouTube. I mean, you, does YouTube produce any content? No. And, 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 but we go there for, for the content, right? Yeah, but, 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 but I think YouTube is a great example here because YouTube is typically what, what it offers its customers is content. We go there because we want to see the content that is available there. And that content is produced by, by the customers themselves. Of course, customers, users, in this case, uh, it's, 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 it's difficult for us to, 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 to differentiate among them. Uh, but, but you understand the message. Uh, there's, there's a lot of possibilities in which we turn those who, who, are, who are the beneficiaries also in the ones who produce uh, whatever is, is being provided to them. And in that sense, when, uh, 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 when we think of Google, well, like only, uh, for example, uh, yeah, Google is, is like that if you think of the search engine because the content, uh, you know, what, what, it's, what, what it gives us is the good, res the, the good, uh, good results for our search. But those good results were only possible because humans connected, uh, linked uh, their websites to someone else's websites. And then, of course, Google's algorithm only had to go there and organize our own work. Right? It's humans' uh, work uh, that, that, that caused that, uh, Google's um, platform to, to work. Uh, if we think of, of all social networks, right? Uh, Facebook, Orkut, uh, Orkut more, more in the past, uh, Instagram now, uh, TikTok, uh, whatever, they're all, I mean, the users are the ones who, who perform the work. So I, I, I even found, I, I, again, I read this paper as soon as it was published in 2008. I told you I bring old stuff because I think it's, it's good, uh, but, um, but I, I, I read you know, I, I, I read new stuff the same way as I, I as I, you know, in a moment I had to read this, uh, the, the old stuff. Uh, so I'm always reading when, when it happens. And when that happened, I already started looking at this and said, how come they did not include another column here for the user as the producer? Because it, was, it, was, it is the most extreme uh, situation in which you can involve the customer. And I don't have an answer for that. You know, maybe if I were the editor for this journal, or, or one of the reviewers, uh, and I had noticed this, and I had asked the authors, I find your, your paper very interesting, but it seems that it, you're lacking one column there. Maybe they would have included. Or maybe they have some reason not to have it included, but then we would have to ask to them. And as they're not Prabhu's uh, uncles, uncle and aunt, uh, it's a little more difficult. <laughs> uh, another thing about this, uh, uh, this uh, proposition of them uh, of course uh, each when we want customers involved in for in each one of these activities you expect different kinds of contributions from them so for example for a product conceptualizer uh, you expect that they will be suggesting ideas for new products uh, or products that need to uh, that need improvements uh, when you ask, when you, you want the customer to be involved as a product designer, you are more interested that they help you specify that product, provide inputs on the products and, and features, and also design trade-offs because many times engineers, I mean, I mean, engineers want to include all possible features that are technically possible. Engineers, in general, they are, they are enthusiastic about the technologies that they, that they built. So they want to have it there, but customers will only want those th those features there uh, if they bring more value than cost. So in this sense, uh, the, 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 the customer as a product designer can also be very helpful because they may say, well, although you find this interesting and I find it interesting also, I don't, I don't like the idea of having to pay uh, so much more to just have this feature. I prefer not to have it. Uh, the product te uh, tester is involved with the identification of flaws, of problems, and, and mainly in, in, in prototypes. Uh, the, the customer that is involved in product support is expected to deliver uh, product support services to, to other customers. And uh, when we think of the 
customer is a marketer, we think of him uh, or her uh, helping to in the diffusion of uh, new product information, shaping peer customers' uh, purchase behavior, and so on and so forth. Uh, although the customer can be involved in several different activities, uh, notice that the, the examples that they gave of uh, companies here, for example, Ducati was able to, or, or was at least was seen as involving customers in the conceptualization of the products. Microsoft is seen as involving customers in the support of its products. Microsoft and Ducati are very different companies, right? Ducati is a, com uh, is, is a company that sells dreams, right? Uh, I mean, not to everyone, but for those who like motorcycles, you know, when you buy a Ducati motorcycle, probably you're buying freedom, you're buying, you know, air on your face, you're buying some experience. Uh, th there's something here that relates to probably more to love than the, the relationship that most of us have with Microsoft. I don't know if I had to, to describe my, my relationship with Microsoft, although it's a very uh, a companion of, that I have in life. I, 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 I relate to Microsoft every day of my life. Uh, I would uh, not refer as something that out of passion or out of love. It's more maybe out of, it could even be out of addiction. Uh, but at, at least it's it's out of well they're there to solve a problem that I have and, and you know so I wanted you to reflect a bit about how the relationship that we have with a brand or with a with a company uh, will end up influencing the kind of activities that we would be willing to to be involved with do you think that for example that a Ducati uh, customer would be inclined, inclined to be involved in, in, in customer support for Ducati? Or, I mean, what would be more interesting to be involved in dream, dreaming about the future of the, the, the motorcycle of the future? Yeah, so this is, this is not, what I want you to notice here is that uh, they were not able to find a company that was able to involve customers in all activities. Because, come on, if you were to, to get involved in, in all companies' activities, you would say, hire me. Right? I'm not going to be working for, for free here. But you get, uh, depending on, 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 on the, the, a person's perception of a, a brand, that brand is cap capable of capitalizing on it, on different things. Microsoft, as I said, uh, and, and this matches well the way I feel about it. Right? If Microsoft uh, called me to, would you like to help us conceptualize our products? I'd say, nah, I'm not enthusiastic about the next version of Windows. No, sorry. But if they told me, well, Alex, we, we realize that you're, you're someone who knows our products very well, uh, and we believe we have a business proposition for you here. Uh, we, we, we know that you sell your service as a Microsoft uh, solution provider or whatever. Uh, and uh, if you give that kind of, uh, if, if you help us support our direct customers, we will help you with your business. Notice, the, my relationship with Microsoft would be business. Very pragmatic. Notice uh, here, the, uh, uh, it's definitely here. Uh, what 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 is the, the experience components over here? Definitely, a pragma the pragmatic com component is very important. Pragmatic in the sense of, you know, I want a direct benefit out of it. Uh, while over here, well, they, they also included the pra pragmatic uh, component as being important, but they they mentioned the hedonic. Hedonic is something that is makes you feel good uh, related to happiness or, or to enjoyment or whatever. Okay. I, I do think that we can attempt to, to get uh, people involved in more than one activity, but I would say understand your company. Again, we have to understand the business, under, understand the business, understand the customers, and then decide in which ways you, you believe you could uh, or you should uh, involve your customers, mainly if you want them involved for free, right? I mean, they're all involved for free here. Uh, there is this, uh, there's a, this author, uh, American author, um, uh, Malone, uh, forgot his first name. Yeah, forgot his first name, right? But anyway, uh, he says that we do things, uh, people are motivated uh, uh, based on love, money, or glory. 
what is the motivation of your customers to support you? Glory? Uh, could be, uh, for example, depends, it depends. For example, for, for Ducati, I would say probably love. And notice, I'm not a, lo a lover of uh, motorbikes, but I understand how these people go about, they're passionate about Ducati or Harley Davidson, depending on, you know, or, you know, whatever. Depending on their style, they will choose a specific uh, motorbike, and, but it, that, that's love. Sometimes it's, um, it's money. M money has, uh, has, has been one of the main pushes, the main motivation drivers that we've had since the Industrial Revolution, at least. Okay. But it's not the only one. And in fact, it's probably not the most effective one in many cases. So we have, again, we have to, to understand. I'm sure that if, if, if Ducati offered its customers money to help conceptualize their products, that would go against it. The customers would say, no, I would do that for love. I, I love this brand. But if you want to pay me, no, I, I have my own, you know. I mean, I, 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 motorbike for me is a hobby. No, it's not my, my work. If you're going to pay me, if you're going to hire me, uh, I don't know how much I would have to charge. Now with, with, uh, with uh, Microsoft, it's different. It would be very difficult for, for Microsoft to make people work for it out of love. I, I don't know, I, I, I realize that there are people that are really enthusiastic about Microsoft also, but it's, it's a little more difficult, right, for that to happen. Because it's a, it's a company that, ha that has placed itself, or has, uh, the, the, the way it has, uh, it presents itself to us, it is, look, it's, the thing here is business. Uh, I, 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 you, you buy my product or you use my product uh, and, uh, and, and you have this sort of benefits, but I will, you know, the, 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 these are, are the benefits you get, those are the, benef the benefits that I will get, and it's business. Microsoft treats it as, as business. Yeah. Other companies treat it as magic or whatever. Yeah, At the end, Rose pardon? Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. Ro Ro Rolls Royce could be, yeah, uh, again, a, a brand that, that people would. So, it's important for us to, not to, to understand how our business attracts its customers because depending on that, we can get them involved in one way or another and, and, and then we don't spoil our relationship with them. Right? Uh, one way of uh, us understanding this, think of n never offer money when people are doing things out of glory or, or, or love because you will spoil that. Uh, I once uh, read this paper uh, that, that was uh, about a kindergarten in Israel and um, parents had to go pick their kids at five o'clock in the afternoon uh, and they were all aware that if they were late a teacher would have to be waiting there with the kid with, with, with someone's son or daughter until the parents came and that caused of course uh, um, uh, embarrassment for or, or some problem for people who were late because they knew that someone was there taking care of their kids in a time that they should be home with their own kids. Or, right? So most people were uh, in time, but there were a few parents that were late for one reason or, or the other. Then the, 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 the principal of the, the, the school decided, you know what, uh, Consider it's unfair that a teacher has to, to be here for an extra hour or so. What I will do is I would start charging the parents that are late with a late fee that they will have to pay uh, because their kids are, are left in school for longer than they should. Did the situation get better or worse? What do you think? Worse. 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 Because then the parents said, well, this is a service that is being provided. So I will. now they were, uh, 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 they, they freed their, their minds of that problem of, you know, consuming someone else's time uh, without any payment. Now, now the, prof the, the, the teacher was being paid. So that, now if they were late, they didn't seem that it was bad. So this is the, the situation in which you spoil, you damage uh, something when you try to solve it. They, they thought that the fine would make people not use that. Uh, of course, if, if the fine was really big, then probably people would uh, respect it. But then they would kill the relationship that exists between a, a, a child care place and the parents. That is a, a relationship based on Notice that love is very vague here, but, but based on, you know, on the fact that it's a caring uh, unit, not uh, a, 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 even if it's a for-profit business, 
it's a for profit that the profit needs to be there but it's not the main uh, uh, the main concern right so be careful here when you when you try to use uh, to, to turn your customer it's, it's this is very effective I, th I think we should always try this look at look at open innovation as a possibility of including uh, bringing new ideas to businesses uh, uh, to, to your business uh, bringing new arms when I mean arms uh, people willing to, to put some effort without being paid simply because they're doing that out of love or, or glory Linux Linux was completely done out of glory maybe a little out of love definitely not a project that was based on money, right? At least in the origin, the, the, the first few few years. Right? But we have to be sensible to understand what is, how do we communicate, how do we relate to our customers. I'm not saying that. And notice that I may have sound uh, as, as more enthusiastic about Ducati as a business than, than Microsoft. Well, Microsoft is definitely much more successful than Ducati as a business, right? Or at least a much larger business, right? We have to be careful the way we define su successful here. But I'm not saying anything against Microsoft's approach. But Microsoft's approach is good for companies that have Microsoft's uh, relationship with its, uh, with its customers and the world. Right? And Ducati's approach here seems more uh, adequate to its own uh, intents. But the, 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 the main uh, uh, idea here in the, the paper is uh, if you build the rights environment, the right virtual environment, customers will come and support you. Right? Is, is building the right uh, virtual environment here a technical issue, a business issue, a social issue? It's probably a bit of all. Right? Yeah. Many startups fail. Pardon? Like many of these startups, startups uh -huh. they eventually fail the majority of them the majority of uh, of startups fail simply because uh, a new business is uh, is risky business it's easier to do something that you know that you already have customers mm -hmm. right uh, and and besides uh, many startups it's not that they, they were built to fail that, that's not the case of course the startup owner whoever started it and whoever is working 18 hours a day uh, to make sure that it works. Of course, they, they have the dream that it will work. But at the same time, uh, being in such a, a new environment, uh, the chances of, of failing are, are high. What happens with startups, uh, mainly the Silicon Valley type of startups, is that many times even the, even, even the startup owner is, is a very aware that it's risky business that, that he or she may, may not succeed with, with, the, with that business. But they are, they are, they're funded to do that, right? Uh, there are other people that are willing to be their, their partners in case they succeed. I mean, it would be good if we could have put some, I mean, we'd have to be some millionaires, right? Or to start with, but if we had put some, millionaire, uh, some, some millions of dollars to sponsor Google when it was starting, because now we would have billions. some billion dollars, yeah. billions of dollars, right? So in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where there's a lot of money available, uh, what they do is they invest in several of those companies. Some of them will succeed, even if one out of a hundred succeed, or if, if it succeeds to, to the level of a, a Google or a Facebook or whatever. Uh, it's more than enough to to pay for all the other 99 that, that failed. Even US has US investor cap is very huge. Investor cap. Yeah, they, they they have a lot of uh, money uh, for for investment. Uh, well, according to you, what will be the next? Startups based on like, maybe success, based on mine or sectors. Yeah, sectors. I, I, I would say that I, IT continues to be a great sector. In, in, if you ask me what they're doing in in California right now, well, right now I mean for the last twenty years or so, biotech. Yeah. Bio, because biotech, what, what they call deep tech, that really needs that the only way that can can that a new business can start in that area is. In a startup model, because the costs involved are huge, the time you need until from from the beginning of the development of a, a technology until it's ready to the market, it is also very large. So if you don't have that kind of funding, it's impossible to do it. Uh, but they still have, uh, I still see a lot of uh, of room 
for for technology uh, startups and for startups that use technology to change uh, businesses that other companies um, have been doing in the past uh, in a, in a in an old-fashioned way, uh, and that technology can change uh, radically. So that that was, for example, for example, the what happened to to Dell that we will we'll discuss on on Friday morning, right? A Dell Dell was a startup that um, was able to solve a problem uh, that the company, the, the incumbent companies, the companies that were already in the computer business, were not able to. That was to turn the computer from an off-the-shelf product into a made-to-order uh, product.